Yeah, so this introduction, uh, it's uh, assuming you are at a place where you've seen the materials that we've been covering in the last two weeks, uh, kind of early quantum mechanics with the introduction of the ad hoc quantum mechanical assumptions, particularly the de Broglie relationship. And um, now where we are at is um, trying to describe some of these particles as quantum mechanical waves. So um, this uh, is the simulation that I think helps you visualize the, the particle represented as a wave packet. So let me download it and run it. So this is the simulation, you know, run it in browser or do like what I did, download it and run it here. Okay, and so this is what I mean. Um, this is the wave mechanical representation of a particle. It has uh, a lot of properties that are um, that are similar to a uh, particle. Um, the I think most important of which is that it's localized. So there's some small region of space where the particle has a non-zero significant ch chance of being found. And way outside of that, the particle has a zero chance of being found. So when you, for example, make the position measurement, measure the position of the particle here, then as a, that's what make a quantum measurement is, uh, you will see that each time the particle is found somewhere within this envelope. I'll just do this five times so that you can see it. So I did it once, let me reset the system. Particle is prepared in an identical way. I measure its position, now it's found to be here. That's the second try. Let me just do it three more times so that you can see the particle is found somewhere in this range, but always at some random location. Like uh, the particle is right now here, and the next time I measure it, it could be exactly there. It's one of the most likely location for the particle to be, but it could also be a, at a slightly different location. Okay, that was my measurement of four. Let me just do one more time. So, yeah, so those are kind of position measurement of that particle wave packet. One thing I want to highlight is that, you know, at this position way out here, the particle had more or less 0% chance of being there. I mean, it's not exactly zero, but it's close enough to zero that you could make a, a measurement for the lifetime of universe and not once it would be here. So, you know, so for all practical purposes, it's zero. So. So, yeah. Now, um, as I pick up, before I pick out one question to do out of this section, one thing I want to highlight is, uh, highlight and maybe explain is a kind of a discrepancy that you might notice between wave function and probability density. Because for the eagle-eyed among you, you might remember the probability density is the wave function absolute value squared and note that, hey, isn't the wave function zero here? When you square zero, isn't, why is not it not zero there? So you might see that, notice that, and uh, ask the reasonable question, hey, why? where's my node? Here's a node there, Where's what happened to my node? And what you have to understand here is what they're plotting, it's the real part of the wave function. So in quantum mechanics, wave functions have to have complex representation, um, except in a, unless you're dealing with a bound state. When you have a bound state, then there's a theorem that proves that you can represent it as a real function. But outside of that, wave functions are, especially traveling wave function like this, is represented as complex exponential. So when you visualize it, you have some choices. You could choose to do it as real part only, you could choose to represent real and imaginary part, or you could choose to represent the magnitude. There, okay, now it's beginning to look similar. But if you are looking at only at the magnitude, um, that's basically square root of this. So you've lost quite a bit of information. So you need to include a phase factor in order to have a full information about weight. And so, uh, Looking back at my education about quantum mechanics, I think a big chunk of it was just understanding significant, civic, uh, significance of a phase factor. 
when it's not important <laughs> and when it is important. Um, so so I, I think the visually what makes the most intuitive sense usually is just the real or real and imaginary parts um, that I think, you know, you can kind of see enough of the wave reflecting here and things coming there. Why is it running so slow? Is it because I'm, this feels a lot slower than it ought to be. But anyways, um, so that's a kind of the thing. Uh, okay, let me see what question out of here that's uh, worth doing. I guess uh, I have to, um, I've done some of this already kind of informally as I was playing with the thing. Um, Okay, uh, let me try it this way. Um, so I think I'm not really gonna an answer any of the questions, <laughs> but what I will do is, since it's called the quantum tunneling and wave packet, let me show you uh, what quantum tunneling is and what it looks like. So at the moment, uh, let me, I'm gonna make the width of the particle broader um, that makes uh, the, um, that makes it the uncertainty of um, particle wave uh, or particle momentum lower. So it makes the uncertainty in the, its kinetic energy lower. And that's kind of what you are seeing here. This, uh, um, this uh, spread in the green bar, it visually represents the uncertainty in energy. So with my broad packet, um, this wave has, uh, let me make it broader. Okay, uh, what I want you to do was, I want you to set it up in such a way so that the um, most of this wave packet has a greater energy than this barrier. So, um, so you could, uh, you know, make a guess. As this wave is incident on the barrier, what would happen? If this had been a classical particle and this had been a classical potential barrier, it would go over it. You know, the particle would slow down as it claims the barrier, and then it would speed it back up as it goes down, and like all of it will go through because this potential barrier is not high enough to stop the particle. Now, quantum mechanically, something interesting happens. Watch. So you do see most of the particle get through. Okay, that part is not that surprising, but watch this. There's some part of the particle that's reflecting back. So quantum mechanically, even when the potential barrier is not high enough to actually stop the particle, there is a non-zero probability of the particle bouncing off. In fact, this is a, you can actually describe the, the phenomenon of the um, light reflecting off of a, a transparent boundary, you know, uh, when the light goes from one medium to the other, it has some prop, it has some intensity that's refracted and some, some intensity that's reflected. And there's a direct analog between that phenomenon of refraction and reflection and this, uh, what you see here with this barrier that's not actually high enough to stop any of the classical particles. So that's one. Now, the other uh, way in which this um, quantum mechanical representation results in a result that it's uh, classically difficult to explain, and this is what we refer to as tunneling. Now, I have changed the parameters here in such a way that the particle does not have enough energy to a great deal of probability. The particle ha doesn't have enough energy to be um, to make it anywhere within this barrier. So classically, all of the incident particle should be reflected away. Now, when you do the experiment, you do see that quite a bit of the incident wave is reflected. Uh, you will see quite a the deal of probability the amplitude of being reflected back to the left. But see here on the right, there's a non-zero probability of particle being here. And if I zoom in on the probability density, oh wait, it doesn't, well, you can kind of see that this is one pixel above zero. <laughs> so there is non-zero probability of detecting the particle here. Now, as I make the quantum measurement, I would have to make it so many times that I won't bother. But if I were to make the quantum measurement, I don't know, 
10,000 times, I think one out of the 10,000, it'll be here. Right now, you know, I, I don't have time to do 10,000 times I want, but um, there is a non meaningful non-zero probability of particle being found beyond the barrier where it didn't actually have enough energy to be there. Um, so so I, I think that's all that I want to point out with this simulation. And oh, I guess I keep promising to do four year analysis and um, let's see, what do I have to do? You know, let me actually bring this back in a future virtual class session, possibly next week or maybe the week after um, and or possibly Friday, we'll see. Um, but um, I'm kind of looking at the time and um, kind of wanting to sort out whatever GPU issue there is with my computer. And I, I think the thing to do is um, let me call the ending, uh, call the meeting to an end here for today. But uh, I'll bring back the remaining parts of this simulation based lab for a future virtual class session and we'll definitely do some of the bound state stuff. Um, either as a, some kind of a lecture where we'll actually set up the system of equations and try to work through it or just to play with the simulation.